Hey there, good morning. Welcome to the Jeep Sala Garage. What do you say we get this steering column back into my 1994 Jeep Wrangler YJ? If you've been following along, you know that my uh, rack and sector gear set went out. I'm gonna take you guys through the process of reassembling this, all the little pieces that go into it. So let's get started. As I mentioned, this is the steering column out of a 1994 Jeep Wrangler YJ. Getting it out was yeah, a little bit of a pain. Uh, I will link the other videos on how I got to this point. Got the steering column all out. First, I want to show you guys though the selection on the uh, starter here. Well, the, not the starter, but the ignition. So there's four different positions here. This is the little mechanism or the, uh, good Lord, what would that be called? The electronics for the starting for the ignition. All right, there we go. Now I got two hands. So this is our selector. When we turn our key, it pushes this rod here, which starts your vehicle. So let's see, all the way back here, that would be accessory. So that's accessory. That's off right there. When you turn your key, that is on, and you turn your key farther, and that is start. So you got start, on, off accessory. So those are all the different selections on your uh, starting mechanism here and how it works. But let me take you through the process of putting our new rack and sector gear set. This is from Dorman. I'll be sure to include this, a link in the description below for you to find this. If you are replacing just the gear, you don't have to take your column all the way out or all the way apart. You can actually do that right through the ignition lock cylinder right here. But because I need to also replace this gear here, this would be the rack. I have to replace the rack as well. We had to take the column apart to get to it right here. But we've got all these little parts and pieces. Let me show you how this all goes back together. Now my mechanism here was a little gummed up. So I did take a little bit of uh, electric contact cleaner here sprayed this down, tried to clean as much gunk out of it as I could. I also did take a little bit of WD-40. Maybe this was a bad idea. And, but I tried to just get it on the mechanical parts, keeping it away from the electronics. I don't want oil on the electric, connect, on the electric connectors here, just on the moving parts, on some of the me mechanical mechanisms of this. So we'll put it back together, see how this all works. All right, the first thing I wanted to show you guys was this little piece here. If this falls out on you, like it did for me, just make sure you get it oriented the correct way. And it just fits up right underneath your column here, around that shaft, and just sits up flush right there. It fits in nice. You'll know when it's in place because it obviously fits there like a puzzle piece just right. Now let's replace our, this is the rack. So this piece, this is my old one. It just goes over this rod there. Super easy like that. Let's get our new piece out and put it in place. So we got our new rack here and this will be linked. It's an Amazon link for you guys. And for some reason, the Amazon link, it says this does not fit a 1994 Jeep Wrangler YJ, but this is the exact, I mean, they are identical. So I think they have it labeled wrong on Amazon. Slides down onto that rod, boom, just like that. Before I get it over all the way though, I'm gonna Kind of get it tucked up underneath here. There we go. Next, I'm gonna show you guys this little piece because this might fall out on you as well. A little spring over it, a little plastic washer there. And this just tucks up. There's a little hole for it right up here. And the base of it fits down under our rack here. I have to back the rack off there a little bit. So those two pieces in just like that. So I've got this all shoved up in there nicely. Next, we're gonna work on our key release here and a spring and another little washer here. And I'll try to show you guys this. This is a little bit of a, a little bit of a puzzle to get together. So the key release goes underneath here. And this little tab here kind of hangs on to the top of our rack there. This spring, it actually is gonna go behind here and tuck right in here into this little spot. But the bottom of the spring 
catches the key release right there. So I kind of put them together, get that spring over that little round spot there, push this side down and slide it over that. So this spring is underneath there. It's underneath the uh, little release there. And with this held on tight, we have tension on our key release. Alrighty, I just took the uh, key release and spring back out because I should have done this before I put that uh, in place. Get our gear, little gear ready here. There we go. Now I've got my new ignition key here. This is what I thought was the original problem, but it turned out not to be, although it was having issues itself. Our new gear is gonna fit in here. Let's see, that's the bottom. It's gonna go like that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this to help me select because I want to make sure that the gears here catch the right spot on the rack there. So I'm going to make sure the rack is turned to the off position. So let's see here. So that's accessory. So that'll be off right there. So now this slides in right there like that. So this will go like that. And that way we make sure we get it catching the correct tooth on the gear there. Now with the rack carefully on the off position and the key, also make sure it's in the off position. This just slides in and I've got my new gear on the inside there ready to go. And I can slide that gear in, making sure it catches the right spot on our rack up here. Now if you can see how on the top there, the right side, there's a larger tooth that fits into the gap on the uh, rack there. Let me show you on the parts I took out. So it's kind of like this right here where that large tooth goes right on the back side there. So that'll, that's how it works. So with a little bit of trial and error, I think we got it in the right place. In hindsight, I guess you don't have to use the key cylinder to line it up as long as you get those teeth lined up in the right spot. I'm just going to kind of drive it down so it sits in there. Gets seated all the way down and catches those gears nicely. Oh yeah, making good progress here. Okay, the gears look great. They're all seated down nicely. Now I can put our key release back in. Good part about this is I'm getting better at it. Doing it over and over. <laughs> and now there's one last tiny little washer that goes over the end there. Now next four little bolts are gonna go on the inside of the column here. We'll get these in place just to kind of hold all of this together so that we can then put our key cylinder in there and test it out, make sure everything works good. And these are just four little eight millimeter bolts. And I really hope this helps you guys out. I know that uh, a video like this sure would help me out with disassembling this and figuring it all out. So here I'm just gonna get these eight millimeter bolts tucked down in here and tighten them down. And if this video does help you out, uh, consider subscribing to my channel. I appreciate the support. Give the video a thumbs up, make a comment. All that stuff helps me out. All right, I got it back together so that the column is, now it's got some stability to it. I stuck the key cylinder back in all the way so it's seated nicely. I went ahead and turned the ignition here to try to test it. And of course it popped my release and spring off. So that's uh, super handy. But anyways, we know how to put that back together fairly easily, so I'm not worried about that. Let's see if I can get it out of the way here. And now I just want to test. There's start, off. Would that be, that'd be accessory if the key will come out nicely. All right, I think we're in business. Although we're not done yet, we still got uh, quite a bit more to do to get this all back in the Jeep and running few screws we gotta put in the bottom here, so let's get to that. So next we're gonna slide, we got our little washer back there on our key release, everything's all back in place. So we're gently gonna slide this shroud back up into place. And there's three little screws here that we took out. You can see in my previous video, they go up underneath here. You're gonna have to use a magnet on them to get them into place. And then a long screwdriver. You're gonna have to use a long Phillips screwdriver to get to them. All right, we got the whole column back together. We're gonna go install it in the Jeep. The key 
mechanism works just fine. Super happy with that. I'm not going to show you guys plugging in each one of these uh, wire looms underneath the dash. It's really hard, hard to film that. Plus, all of these, as you unplugged earlier, they just plug back into the same spot. They only go into one area, so you really can't mess them up. It'd be very difficult to mess them up. So I won't be showing that, but I will show the rest of the installation of getting this back into the intermediate shaft. And then I'll throw back together the uh, whole steering steering wheel, all the components of that, the signal and everything. And one more little piece I forgot to show was this little rod right here that goes to your lights. There's just a little switch right here. I loosen these two bolts on the back side here, slide this rod down, it goes up into a little hole on the inside of the column. You shine a flashlight down there, you can see a little hole that that rod goes into for your, your headlights, a little switch mechanism right there. Two little bolts on the back side here where you can kind of adjust the position of this. Pretty easy. Now we just drop the shaft back down in the column here. The column into the uh, dash. And as I showed in my video where I disassemble everything, I've got the intermediate shaft mark here with a little bit of my daughter's fingernail polish. Thank you, honey. And the shaft here. So let's uh, get these lined up exactly how they were and tighten this pinch bolt down. I am going to put a little bit of Loctite on this bolt because I don't want my steering to come apart when I'm driving. All right, that's good and tight. Happy with how that turned out. Now let's go on to uh, plugging in all the wires. All righty, all our wiring is back together. Now let's put this bracket back on the firewall and then this bracket here on the steering column itself right up here and we'll be set. Alrighty, the steering column is back in there securely. All the wiring is hooked back up. At this point, I should be able to start it. Let's give it a try. Battery's hooked back up. This has been sitting for quite a while, so this is a big moment. Let's see. It lives, yes! That is super exciting. This Jeep has not run in, honestly, a couple months. If you guys are following the channel, you know that. Now I gotta just put the rest of these components back in to put the steering column back together, the steering wheel, the horn, uh, the spring, all that kind of stuff. We'll throw that back in real quick. And everything's gonna go back in in the reverse order that it's laid out here. I lay everything out in a very specific order. One trick when it comes to getting this little snap ring in uh, over this piece right here, uh, what I do is I actually put these in place and then use the bolt here to push it all back down in place to snap it in, then take the bolt back off and put everything else back on. So one little tip there, but this won't take very long. I am going to disconnect the battery though, because I don't want the Jeep on or having power while I'm messing around with the wiring in the steering column there. So let's disconnect the battery real quick. So what I ended up having to do was uh, put another washer underneath here and then the bolt and then uh, get my screwdriver underneath that washer to kind of pry this down to push it on to get that snap ring on. But we're in business now, got it in place. But honestly, yeah, a steering wheel compressor would make this a lot easier. I get by without it, but uh, we're making do with what we got. Now that I got everything lined up, that little snap ring in place under there with a the little washer, the one that came off originally. I go ahead and tighten everything down. And so I'm just using this to press this down to pop that snap ring into place. And yes, this would be a lot easier with a steering wheel compressor, but I don't have one, so I'm getting by with what I do have. Now that I got it in place, these pieces can come off the nut here and this, and then I can assemble everything else. Well, we are up and running. It feels so good to have this uh, Jeep going again. It was out of commission for a couple months, so really glad to have it back. If you need a more detailed view of putting the steering wheel and all those components back together, be sure to check out one of my other videos where I disassemble it all. I go through a pretty good explanation there. Thank you guys so much for your support. I appreciate it. Check out my next video right up here. Have a good day.